Hello and welcome back to Crime and Justice. Right, so I'm just sorting my cats out. Trying to keep them quiet for a change. I don't think it'll work. Bribery. Bribery does not work with my cats. If you could see their pictures now, they're sitting there looking up at me. Like, nope, it's not going to work, Mama. Anyway, I hope you've all had a lovely day, or having a lovely day, wherever you are. It's eight, ten past eight in the evening here in Scotland. I had to laugh the other day, because I was watching... 
it was last night, I was watching this video, and this guy, he doesn't talk on me. He, t- he puts, like, a talk over, like, r- subtitles over the video, right? And he was going from London to Scotland by train, and it was taking 12 hours. It, it was an overnight time, overnight one. And he's going up to the re- like the furthest you can go by train apparently in Scotland. Fort, Fort William, I think he said. <laughs> anyway, he got off there, and then he caught a bus into Glasgow, which was three hours away. Well, why go to Fort William? You could have just gone straight to Glasgow. Anyway, he goes to Glasgow. And he gets off in Glasgow and he goes to the hotel. And he, then he checks in and everything. And he goes and gets some to eat. And he goes, I'm really tired today. It must be the time difference. And I, I sat there and I thought, what is this guy talking about time difference? You know what I mean? When it's 8 o'clock here, it's 8 o'clock in England. There is no time difference. What I will say is, I, I'm not sure, I think it gets darker a little bit earlier in England than it does in Scotland. Or either way, it's either in Scotland it gets darker a little earlier, or England, one of the two. But there's no time difference. You don't have to go, oh, well done, I've got to put my watch back an hour. Or I've got to put my watch forward an hour. You don't have to do that. Christ, if I did that, I'd be doing it all the time when I went back and forth to England. I just could not believe what he said. I thought, where's this guy from? There is no time difference. Some of these people. I told you it wasn't working. My cats are there crying out. As soon as I come on and start a live, they start. Honest to, honest to God, they start. Hold on. I'm going to give you a little music while I go and sort these two out. Try and bribe them a little more. I'm going to have to put them on a diet soon because I'm going to get so fat through all the treats I have to bribe them with. Anyway, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. About that guy with the time difference. I don't know where these people come from. I really don't. I can imagine if you... I can understand if he went from uh, London over to France or somewhere like that. I'm not even sure if there's a slight time difference in Ireland. I've been to Ireland and I can't remember having to put my clock forward or back at anything. But when you go to France, yes, there is a time difference. Or anywhere over in Europe, there's a time difference, but you're going across one border. It's on the same island from England to Scotland. You're not going across a big ocean, you know what I mean, there's no time difference. Anyway, well, oh yeah, now tonight we're looking at, yes, we're going back to 1999. You might wonder why. 
But um, the reason I'm doing this is because now, with everything that's been going on, I've heard they might be re looking at that case. Even though someone was charged and sent to prison for it, he wasn't charged with anything like the shooting, like the injuries, the injuries to the people. He wasn't charged with any of that. And now there is one woman, and her name is Natanya Rubin. She was there. She was so there that she got shot in the face. That she's got uh, pieces of the uh, bullet. Right? Shrapnel or whatever in her, in her nose. Still. And has said she will willingly go under the knife to have that shot, the, uh, the bullet bits removed if it means, if it helps with the case. She was there. She saw who had the gun. She told them who had the gun. But no. Once again, Diggy clicks his fingers and Diggy gets away with it. He had a lot of people to pull strings, powerful people. Right? People who we could probably, I'm not saying it did happen. I'm just, in my opinion, it could possibly be people who could pay off. Right? Now, as it said in, hang on, I'm going to pull it up on my screen. You won't see it because I can't share it on my screen for some reason. Why is it? Come on. Um, it says in that uh, book, right, and it talks about the shooting in the Kim Porter memoirs. <coughs> and when Jen Jennifer Lopez come round to the to his house after the shooting. I swear to God but, oi, oi, oi. Come on, come on Tinkle Toes. Come up on my lap if you're going to be quiet. Come on. Anyway, and it mentioned, I can't find it. Anyway, it mentioned, and she said, Oh, you don't understand, my attorneys aren't like that. Right? And uh, he said, Don't worry, it's all sorted. And she went, Apparently, this is apparently from what was in the book. You're not going to uh, threaten my attorney, are you, or kill my attorney, or something like that. And he went, no. But then he goes, but money talks. So how do you think he got up with that? Money talks. He paid that Jamal Shai Barrow. 21 year old rapper. This was the rapper that took Biggie's place. He was going to be the face of bad boys. He was going to be the person he was going to promote and build up and get him up there at the top and all this stuff. He's, he didn't sacrifice him because even in the diaries in that memoir it says I was 10 for a penny. You can find him anywhere. That's what he thought of Jamal. Shy. As I called him, shy. He paid him. can't remember how much it was now. Quite a bit. To take the fall. That was his music. It, when he come out of prison, I that was his music business done with. B, he got deported back to Belize or somewhere. 
Right? It's nap in. I believe I heard it's nap in doing like um. Oh God, a uh, government sort of work, like an MP sort of thing over in Belize. So that was his music career. Shot out the window. Just to take the fall for a guy who thought thought of you as two for a penny. I thought so that's what I thought of him. He had a good voice, but he's somewhere else. He didn't have the the flow. He had a good voice, voice, but the flow wasn't there. So, Jamal Shai Barrow took the fall and did nine years. Even though Natanya Ruben said it was P. Diddy who had the gun. So we're going to look at this case. Because I did hear about it when it happened. Right. Oh, God. I did hear about it on the news like you do. But, as I said, I've never been one into the pop, pop, uh, pop culture, the, the rap culture. I've never been into it. I like certain songs, but you ask me... Who sings it? It's like, I don't know, I just like the song. Right? And so I don't know half the people who do these, who sing the songs. I remember my daughter was coming up here once with a friend from Glasgow up to where I live because they had this big radio music festival on at a big park. Literally, I'd say about 10 minute drive from where I live. You could actually hear it when the, when you had your windows open. So she was going to that and she said, oh, it's great, Mum, there's such and such day now. And who's that? She said, she looked at me and said, you know, the one with Jess, whatever, who sang that, this song and she named this song. I went, oh, oh yeah, I like that song. Well, she was there. I went, oh, okay. But I didn't know who sang it until she said the song. Don't tell me an, an artist. And they go, you know that artist. I go, tell me his song and I'll tell you if I know the artist. Right? I know Diddy through that song he done with uh, Missing You. Right? And he did it at, um, I was watching some of it today, where we sang it at a, like a memorial thing for Diana, 10 year anniversary thing. And he sang that song at, at him. And you know, I felt physically sick watching it, knowing what I know now, I felt physically sick watching that. Because I thought, Diana, would not be, would, could not condone what you have been doing. You know what I mean? She would not condone. But then again, she was seen with Diddy, um, not Diddy, um, uh, some, oh God, what was his name? I can't think, some other guy who was known for selling, uh, what was it, uh, landmines and things like that. And she was all against that, but she was seen with him. Anyway, we're going to have a look at this article. Let me move myself out of the way, down to the bottom here. Right. That's the what? Is that the right one, Amal? Yeah. The complete relationship timeline of J Lo and P Diddy. 
The couple were arrested following a shooting at the start of their relationship. That's the way to go. That's the way to go, guys. You want to get a girl to hook up with you? Let's go out and do a shooting. No, not really. Not really. Don't do anything like that. Right? J-Lo and P. Diddy's relationship was an iconic moment for Hollywood. The two musical mammoths were truly in their prime when they struck up a relationship at the end of the 90s. So from a New York shooting to that green Versace dress, here's a look at J-Lo and P. Diddy's relationship. Now bearing in mind, when he was seeing J-Lo, he was still with his uh, first, with the mother to his two sons, was it by then? No, to the uh, Christian, the first son she had with Diddy, right? Because it was around about 2003 or something, she had the twins. I think it was around back then. I'm learning a lot. I don't follow celebrities. I don't do celebrities. I do crime. And that's why I'm looking at this case. Because it was a crime. And it was a, there was an injustice here. And I think it needs to be looked at again. And yes, if J-Lo was involved, even if she was carrying the gun, she was there. She took the gun in, in her purse. Right? She's involved, she's complicit to that as well. They met while making a music video. More than two decades ago, when Jennifer Lopez, or J-Lo as she was known back then, was an up-and-coming artist, she met producer P. Diddy. Diddy had just broken up with his long-term aunt-off girlfriend. You know, he's still with her. In fact, the night she came round to his house, he was with Kim, apparently, in them in memoirs. Right? They met in 1999 after Diddy was pegged to work with Jennifer on the music video for a song, If You Had My Love. From here on, their relationship blossomed and they was considered a Hollywood, it, a Hollywood it couple at the turn of the millennium. A shooting led to them both being arrested. Is that the mugshot that took off him? Hmm. Hello again to everyone on X who's here watching. Thank you for being here. Right, is that the mugshot? Ugly. Ugly. In 1999, the couple were involved in a shooting at a New York nightclub, which ended up in, a, in them both being arrested, and whilst J-Lo's charges were dropped, Diddy went to trial for bribery and gun possession, but was later acquitted. How on earth was he acquitted? You know what I mean? It just, it's just mind blowing. There was that Versace, Versace dress moment. Yep, everyone remembers that, don't they? Even I remember that. She looked really happy there, didn't she? Mm, she did. She looked really, really happy there. Famously attended the two thousand Grammys together in which J-Lo wore her, her iconic, low, cut green, tropical Versace dress, but just one light, year later, the couple would split. In 2017, when Diddy was asked about the groundbreaking moment, he told E.T. He told E.T. 
We were just stepping up our game as far as what we was wearing and how we were going to use fashion. I thought it was really going to change the game. Right, so did he tell her, her wardrobe manager what, she, what he wanted her to wear? Because apparently they don't get a say in what they wear. They go and they go, right, we've got this dress, you're going to wear this, you're going to have your hair like this, you're going to have makeup like this. After the shooting, the relationship became rocky. Wow, well, yeah, I should imagine it would. They just shot up a flipping nightclub and lied. And on Valentine's Day 2001, they decided to call it quits for good. A statement made to ABC by Diggis publicist said, Mr. Coombs confirmed that he and his love, Jennifer Lopez, have in fact broken up. Okay, but yet, when your the mother to your four children died, you didn't know how you was going to cope without her being there. She was your one love. Yep, he wanted to put all the rumours surrounding their relationship to rest. At this difficult time, we ask you, ask that priv you respect his privacy. How no? How now are we going to respect anyone's privacy? And whilst the cause was never given for the split, Diggs' alleged inf infidelity was pegged to be the reason, as well as lingering feelings for his on off girlfriend, Kim Porter. Exactly. During an interview with Rolling Stones, JLo, JLo explained she and her ex had different ways of thinking, saying, that whilst Diggy loves to go out, she's more of a homebody. I'm a homebody. My neighbour, when I lived down in England, called me a home bird, homing bird. The pigeons, you know, where you let the pigeons off and they come fly back home. I'm a home bird. I like. I was happy at home. I hate going out. I do now. I hate going out now. I really do. Right. I've got my daughter coming next week. So I'll be out Friday evening, not all evening, not late. Saturday, we'll just probably just stay at home, oh, because I don't like going out. Sunday, we're going into town to make, meet my son, his wife, and my two grandkids. And then I think she goes home Monday, I'm not sure if she goes home Monday or Tuesday. She's only here for a few days. Joining into, uh, she's more of a homebody. They split, their split led to one of the most iconic celebrity romances of the 21st century. Yeah, right. After Jay, after Jay Lowe and P. Diggs' relationship, she moved on with Ben Affleck, who she met on a set of Geekly in 2001. However, they didn't go public with the relationship till 2003. Oh, that's just all about Ben Affleck now. Right. Now I'm going to put in another one because that one didn't give me much on the shooting. I found one earlier which gave me a lot more info. Uh -huh. Right, let's close that down. Right, I'll read one. I want to show you. All right. Now, as I said at the beginning, the reason I'm looking at this is because the feds could be, could reopen the case. 
right? Fed said to widen Diddy sex probe over claims rapper boasted about shooting people, bribing jurors and using J-Lo as a gun mule. All right, so that's why I wanted to. Oh, yeah, it's got here. The 54-year-old flashed a peace sign as he took his 17-year-old daughter, Jessie and Delilah, for a round at Top Golf in Miami Gardens. That is not the peace sign. That's the F-U sign. Really? Oh, my God, where do these people come from? That's the F-U sign. If his fingers were facing the other way, and yes, it would be the peace sign, but that's it. I know I use it a lot to people rather than say the word because apparently now um, in the England, in the UK, they're actually enforcing the law, this law they brought in years and years and years ago, never enforced it. Where if you, if, if you swear in public, and you are heard, you can be fined a hundred pounds. Well, I'm fucked. Because I walk out of my house and I go, for fuck's sake, fuck this, what the fuck? You know, that's what I'm like as I'm walking around. What? You know what I mean? It's F this, F that. You know what I mean? They'd have to lock me up because I wouldn't have the money to pay them. But that's not a peace sign. That's the F you sign. Why? Oh, God. Right, that's the F-U sign. I, I can't, I can't get my head down some people. Right, let's just... Right. Almost 25 years ago, just after 2.30 a.m. on a cold winter night, three NYPD detectives were called to the Midtown North Precinct. Rap impresario Sean Combs, then known as Puffy, his girlfriend Jennifer Lopez, his bodyguard Anthony Wolf Jones, and rapper Jamil Sean Barrow had been arrested following a shooting inside the Times Square club. Now remember that bodyguard's name, Anthony Walt Jones, because I was watching a YouTuber today, and you know how that one, what was her name? Oh, God, I can't think of the name. Thalia, Thalia Grace. She's mentioned a certain bodyguard on her Right. And um what was his name again? Joseph Sherman. And she said apparently he was Diggy's bodyguard at the time. He saying he wasn't Diggy's bodyguard in two thousand and one. I know it isn't the it wasn't Jeannie, Jean. you know that Jeannie guy, can't think of his name, I'll be looking into him as well, don't worry. He didn't start working for him until 2003. Right? But we're going to be looking into that, we're going to be looking into that tomorrow. Because some, that Sherman guy, oh, that bodyguard, it's, some it's not right. With, uh, what's her name? Thalia, Thalia, remember the, trying to find you, Thalia Graves and Joseph Sherman. I want to look into that and we'll be looking into that tomorrow night. I know, I know, it's, it's like you're going down one rabbit hole and then there's another, you're literally going 
it's like a rabbit hole, this case is. It really is. Right, so all those are being arrested. Puffy, Lopez, Anthony Wolf, Jones, and the rapper, Shai Barrow, Shai, Jamal Barrow. Shooting inside a Times Square club that wounded three bystanders. The cops found Lopez, then 30, cuffed in the cage. Combs were also in the station house on West 54th Street. His plans for a spectacular celebration of the new millennium a few days later, temporarily, I can never say that word, on hold. Now, the events of the night and the sensational trial that followed in the early 2001 are back in the spotlight. Yeah. The two law enforcement sources tell the Post that the infamous shooting and the trial could possibly be reinvestigated as part of a sweeping federal probe into Coombs, now 54 and, 54 and called Diddy. Well, I've got other names I'd like to call him, but I can't. Whose past includes more than one mysterious shooting. Oh, yeah. Yeah, more than one mysterious shooting. Uh, what about Tupac? Tupac, I mean, Tupac. And I, I wouldn't say he was involved with Big, with Biggie. Biggie Smalls or whatever they're called in Biggie, but he knew it was going to happen. Right. So, there's a few other cases I need to look into with Biggie. On Monday, Homeland Security agents swarmed Coombs home in Los Angeles and Miami in raids that law enforcement told the Post were prompted by S trafficking alle allegations. <coughs> <coughs> they got eyes on him in Miami, and the feds are talking to witnesses and witness. To I've talked to wi witnesses after witnesses. New York criminal defense attorney Michael Gisioero, who is familiar with the case, told Post. They are corroborating everything they can. But everything past and present is on the table, Mr. Diddy, right now. So everything, even in his past, is on the table. They're looking into it all. There's a picture of it inside the New York club on West 43rd Street, 20 minutes after bullets flew, and J-Lo and Diggy fled in a navigator before being arrested. They honestly thought they could get away with that without being stopped by the police. They really did. But this is like 20 minutes, right? Where's this crime scene type? Where's... These people shouldn't be there. That should have all been cleared. They should have been in there, looking where the, any, where the bullets were coming from and all that lot. This is 20 minutes after the shooting. This is 1999. That's bad, I think. That is bad. They should have been swarmed with police in there and CSIs. There was a shooting, three people got injured. The federal agent stormed into Diddy's home one month after Rodney, little Rod Jones, filed an explosive lawsuit claiming the musical mogul repeatedly SA'd him from September 2022 to November 2023, 
while Joe's was a producer and videographer for the billionaire. Joe's compared Coombs to Jeffrey Amster. Yeah. Right, and I've just downloaded a two thousand pound a two thousand page document on the Epstein. And accused the mogul of groping his genitals, grooming him into having sex and forcing him to procure sex workers, strippers and drugs. His suit came less than three months after Diddy settled an explosive lawsuit alleging sex violence filed by his former girlfriend, Arne B. Singer Cassie, alleged that Diddy ran an Epstein-like operation involving SA, human trafficking and blackmail with hidden cameras that captured high-profile names in entertainment, politics and sport in um, homosexual acts and other compromising positions. Do you know my my video from last night was flagged? Flagged! Tell you why, because I use the word uh, M-U-R-D-E-R. This one will probably get flagged as well. Right, and if it gets flagged, they don't push it out so much, and it annoys me. So I have to go and edit it out so that at least... Right. Right, so they date from 1999 to 2001. Now, that case with... Um... Ooh. Thalia Graves happened in 2001. So I'd like to know when they split up because they know the gauge. I can find out the gauge for Thalia Graves one. Yeah, that's his booking photo after the night at the Club New York shooting in December 1999. Right. Jones alleged in his suit that Diddy was violent, threatened to eat his face. Brandished G U N S and most potent most pointy parent, pointedly was often bragging about bribing witnesses and jurors in the criminal case concerning the 1999 New York club, night club shooting. So, I could believe that. I could really believe that. Because how did he get off? How on earth did he get off when you got three witnesses and one explicitly saying it was P. Diddy who had the gun? How did he get off? Right? But Diddy... Oh, the shooting stemmed from an argument between Diddy and a Brooklyn thug named Matthew Allen. Hold on, let me write that name down. Because I'm looking into all these names. I'm not joking, I've sat there today and I've been watching YouTube channels. And every name I brought up, if I haven't got it written down, I'll be writing it down. It's like a flipping rabbit hole. Matthew Allen, I'm going to check him out. Scar. Okay. Whose nickname was Scar. Hmm. Nice. Probably had a scar somewhere across his face. But Diddy, his bodyguard, Anthony Jones and Sean Barrow endured a seven-week trial in February and March 20, 2001 which ended with Diddy and Jones walking free and Babo. Then 21, being convicted on assault and gun possession and sentenced to 10 years in prison. You know what I mean? It shows money talks. 
mystery still surrounds the club New York shooting, especially for former... Oh, God, come back in. Alrighty. Mystery still surrounds the club New York shooting, especially for former NYPD detective Derek Parker, who left the so-called hip-hop cop, cop squad at the NYPD and is now a private investigator. See, we don't, over here in the UK, we don't have private investigators. So most people who have been in the police force, if they leave, they leave and do security. You know what I mean? So... I think if we'd have had private investigators were a big thing. <coughs> <coughs> In the UK. I think I would have gone in for that. I'd have got my licence and gone in as a private investigator when I was younger. Because I always like digging dirt up on people. I do. You know, he's, like, he's 22 when he, you know what I mean? He's a young lad. He had his whole life together. And he's, he took the fall for that piece of S. As I would say, that piece of ish. I'm not spelling the word no more. I'm going ish. That piece of ish. Right? He's a young lad. Keep Puffy free, let him be. Oh, God. This was back in 2001. Could you imagine him now? What would be like now? DD has been dogged for years by rumours that he made shine. Now known as Moses Michael Levi Barrow, and who is the opposition leader of the House of Representative, Representatives in Belize, take the fall for the incident. I really do think he did. Oh, see this? Yeah, I've got one very similar. But mine aren't round, these two there aren't round, they like oblong, I've got one round and I've, I've got all these things on the side. I've got a little mic, type recorder, mic thing, yep. You can't trust me now, you never know if I'm going to tape my family, you never know. I could be taping you, and then I'll bribe you. Right, <laughs> the story was that Puff was flossing. Oh. Which is what they call someone on the streets is throwing money around and acting like a big shot, Parker said. Scar felt disrespected because he felt he was was he felt he was as important as Puff. And words were exchanged and then bullets started flying. DJ all that's DJ leaving court. Died during his 2001 child. You know what I mean? And that poor lad, he was then deported back to Belize. Okay, he's made a good life for himself now. But he wanted to be in the music business. I think the music business is just full of sick, evil people. I think people with money are evil, a lot of them. So not all of them, some of them. Because they think they can get away with anything. Flash the money, they get away with it, and that's not on. Uh, where are we? Oh, yeah. Right, as I say, there's more just joined us in, on X. We're looking back at the case of... The shooting in 1999, 
were sorry, Jamal Sorry Barrow, that was his name at the time, was sentenced to 10 years for gun, what was it now, gun, He was convicted on assault and gun possession. So no one was convicted for the the injuries these people. You know what I mean? Right, hang on, we'll get into it. Shots were fired and Lopez and Didi fled the club in a Lincoln Navigator. Yeah, they was hoping to get back to one of these houses before the police even knew what had happened. Oh, yeah. Didi's driver walked out. Fenderson later said he blew past several red lights as they careened down 43rd Street and onto 8th Avenue. Weaving past two police got wow, no wonder you got pulled over, you silly pillocks. <laughs> shine, busted off, shine, busted, shine, shine, busted off, shine, busted off in the air. Fenders and Craig Lopez were saying before cops pulled them over. Hmm, I don't understand that. Parker told the post how in the precinct her mother was yelling at J-Lo in Spanish and she was really mad at Jennifer. I heard her say, I told you not to get involved with him. Hmm, yep. Lopez was released from custody without being charged after 14 hours in jail. Yes, because money talks, as did he put it. A spokeswoman declined to comment to the post, but sources in her camp made it clear that she was never charged in 1999. No, she wasn't. I'm sorry, she should have been. But she's got money. Diggy had money. That poor lad, Shy, didn't have the money. He was just new into the bit. He was new in the business. You know what I mean? He was going to be the face for bad boy music thing. He was going to be their face. He was going to work with him and bring him up and nurture him and everything. He didn't have any money like Diddy and J-Lo. And his security guard's not going to go down, is he? Diddy's going to make sure he don't go down, or his driver. I did hear, I'm sure it's in this. Right? I did hear that apparently they tried to bribe the driver to say it was his gun. You know what I mean? Right, now we're coming to the one witness, one of the witnesses. Nathaniel Rubin, who was one of three victims in the club shooting, has long insisted that Coombs shot her in the face. I literally watched them pull out the guns. I had a clear point of view. I mean, for God's sake, I got shot in my nose, Rubin said during an appearance in News Nation. Thursday. I watched everything occur and have described it vehemently to all parties involved. I have nine bullet fragments remaining in my face. She's lucky to be alive. Jones, in his lawsuit, claims Diddy openly bragged about committing the shooting and bribing witnesses and jurors to, to secure his acquittal. Now, this is why, as well, 
they don't won't they have fought and fought and fought to keep him locked up because they know what he's done before. Everyone in that night probably go, Oh, what a shooting? Didn't see nothing, officer. Oh, was there shooting officer? No, I didn't see nothing. No, I didn't hear nothing officer. No, sorry. There was he no evil, see no evil, speak no evil. He also alleges that Didi bragged about using Lopez to smuggle a gun into the club. Hmm. He said that artist and Mr. Coombe's girlfriend at said that, that artist and Mr. Coombe's girlfriend at the time, Jennifer Lopez, aka J Lo, carried the gun in the club for him and passed him the gun after he got into an altercation with another individual. Jones alleges. Why was he taking a gun with him anyway to the nightclub? Why? You've got security guards, you don't need a gun. Yeah, you got your security guards, bodyguards, whatever you want to call them. You don't need a gun. Did he, through attorneys, has denied Jones' allegations. His attorney called the federal raid a witch hunt slam the military level force used. No, I agree with the force used. They was going into a property, right, where they know which where they was told had guns, right? They didn't know if anyone in that property was going to grab one of them guns and use it. Diddy was backed this week by Glenn Beck, who is working security at the nightclub and is now a martial arts expert who works with Deadly Art of Survivor magazine. Beck testified at the 2001 trial, but told the Post that it appeared the prosecution was hell-bent on nailing Diddy and therefore did not ask him about Barrow, a.k.a. Shy. Diggy mm. was backed this week by Glenn Back, who work, was working securing and is now a martial arts expert with Deadly Art of Survival. Yeah, he's got his own business now. He's been paid off. How much did he pay you off, Glenn? Bye. How bent on nailing Diddy? How could they nail Diddy? Apparently they had nothing against him. You know what I mean? It wasn't his gun. It was Shine that admitted to it. So why would they be going after Diddy? Shine admitted to the shooting. He caused Jones to climb bull ish and said, We knew Scar, we knew Shine. He's a wild kid from Brooklyn. No, I don't. No. Yeah, this is another shooting. No, this is a picture at the bathroom of another shooting. Where producer Rodney Little Little Rod claims Jones Jones claims a man was shot, but they told him the shooting happened outside of the studio and it was a drive-by shooting. Well, if it was a drive-by shooting, why is there all this blood in the bathroom? You know what I mean? So there's another instance there. So there's three tomorrow and that one four. There's four. I'm counting them here. Tupac. He knows something about Tupac. He knows something about Biggie. There's this shooting. There's the 1999 shooting. There's four. Beck said, just as the fight was be brewing between Diddy and Scar, Sean ran out of the club and returned a few minutes later without being searched by security. That's when the shooting began, he said. Then right after, we heard shots ring out. 
Sean ran out of the side door of the club that was attached to a hotel. He climbed, came flying out of the doors and was immediately arrested by two cops who were outside and had heard the shots inside. Well, they was there fucking quick, weren't they? Where were they? Can you have him as he's running out the side door? Where the hell were those police? They, they must have been standing outside the flipping nightclub. You know what I mean? Barrow admitted at trial that he pulled out a gun and fired during the fracas and so far had not accused Diggy of making take the fall for him. No, he didn't then. He didn't. Right. Rahim Mahoum Mohammed did his chief of security was a mastermind fixer with connections at the LAPD. Rodney Jones alleged in his lawsuit against Diddy. Yeah, apparently Diddy told all his staff that if ever he's uh, pulled over by the police to get in touch with this guy. To get in touch with him, Raheem Mohammed. Raheem, previously Michael Jackson's head of security, about to take the stand during Conrad Murray's involuntary manslaughter trial in 2011. Let's write that name down so I can just check that out. I'm not joking, I'm, I'm making this work for myself, but there's so many names that comes forward, and... That may not lead to nothing, may not be anything, but... The post was unable to reach Barrow in his native Belize. Beck also disputed that Lopez could have been used as a good mule and said, I remember how well she was dressed that night and she's very slim. She's not going to be hiding that. No, she had it in her little clutch bag. But the 1990 suit is not only one likely to be examined, is only, it's not the only one likely to be re-examined by federal investigators. No, it won't be. Right? Jones also alleged that Diddy lied about his son, Justin Combs' role in a 2022 shooting at... Jones also alleged that Diddy lied about his... his and his son's Justin Combs' role in a 2020 shooting at the Chalice Recording Studio in Los Angeles, in which a friend of Justin, no, only as G, was hit twice. Is that another shooting? If so, there's like five. Right. He was born to, I don't know, the mother, I can't remember, the mother to, for Justy. Right. There was Quentin, who was Albie, Albie's son. Right. No, I'm not standing up. Right. There was <coughs> Christian. Then there was Justin. Yeah. Then literally months later, um the twins were born. Or what she was pregnant with the twins. Something like that. <coughs> Jones claims that he was present at the chalice shooting. Oh, chalice shooting now. Right. 
which she said occurred at a recording camp in the studio where Diddy, Justin and she got into a heated conversation, then moved into the restroom where shots rang out. Oh, that was that one we just spoke about. Photos in Jones' lawsuit, lawsuit show what we purportedly was a blood aftermath after the shooting in the bathroom. Jones said he stepped in to help G, who was bleeding out, and took him outside to an ambulance. Mr. Goo Coombs gave strict instructions to inform the police that he had nothing to do with the shooting, Jones alleged. He also forced Mr. Jones to lie to the police by telling them that G was standing outside the studio by a drive by asylum. You wouldn't have all that blood in the toilet if that was the case. You will do. The LIPD did not return numerous calls from the post, but post police spokesman told NBC News that three people were arrested two months later and accused of a series of robberies throughout LA including the shooting of G. Mm -hmm. Police said G had told them he was shot in a struggle with attempted robbers. Okay. How much was G paid off? Jones also alleged that Diddy's head of security, Fahima Humming, who was once head for security for Michael Jackson, is a powerful fixer with connections with LAPD who Jones claims had the power to make people and problems disappear. Hmm, I can believe that. Management at Chalice, where Diddy has recorded multiple times, declined comment Friday. Diddy, however, is not without other defenders. LA rapper Glasses Mal Glasses Malone, a former creep who grew up in South Central LA and who had been around Diddy on multiple occasions told the Post, I found Jones' law lawsuit pretty disin disingenuous. This guy calls himself a Christian, but yet he let him himself be forced into getting strippers and cocaine for Puff. Yet, yeah, because Puff had something over him. You know what I mean? Puff had something over him. That's how Puff worked. That's how Diddy worked. He'd get you, he'd get something over someone, and then he holds him like a carrot. I've got this, don't forget the video I've got, don't forget that audio I've got. You know what I mean? Don't forget those photos I've got. Right? Malone, Malone, who uses the same network of Ally recording studios like Chalice and others, said the only thing that concerned him in the Joe's lawsuit was the shooting involving G. If true, that's the only thing the law, lawsuit that shows criminal intent to me, Malone said. <sighs> Got to stay nice with Diddy, haven't you? Even though he's locked up. And we're talking about this, but nobody knows who this G guy is or where he is. Yeah. That's a mystery to me. Where's he gone? But Jason Whitlock, author and host of the Fearless, Fearless podcast, Pink, opined to the post there's an avalanche of truth coming as well as a lot of distortions and opportunities coming yeah i believe that as well diggy could get buried by the avalanche yeah i truly believe that you know what i mean because So, like, I'm sorry, but why are people still sticking up for Diddy? If there's one or two civil cases of SA and all this law, then I'd say, I could say, mm, okay, 
Yeah. The chances, they could try, be trying to be chances. But I like to believe them. It's like everyone's innocent until proven guilty, like Diddy is innocent until proven guilty. Right? I've just heard Red Summit tonight where apparently he's been took off the suicide watch because he's so determined to prove his innocence. That. They took him off suicide watch. Now, I also heard that when you're on suicide watch, this is why I might do a live on the Epstein case. My right, Epstein case. Right, when you're on suicide watch, you don't have no blanket, no clothing, no belts, no, no ties, nothing. Nothing you can use for a garage. Nothing. Right? You don't have nothing. And it was, what's his name? The one who's in jail already. Oh, God, what's his name? Oh, God. Mm hmm I'll find it in a minute. Mm -hmm. Oh, God, there is among him. Silk, Silk Knight. He said in that interview, if you go back and listen to it, that the best thing he can do is to not not show them, not let them, not to to show them that you're not going to hurt yourself. He said because if, if they've got you on suicide watch, you'll get nothing. No blankets, no no towel, nothing. Right? You get nothing because you could use it to grow up yourself. Right? Now. I know I'm going off subject a little bit here, and I will talk about this in another live. But in the Epstein case, it shows his son, a picture of his son, after he died. Now, he was on suicide watch, yep, apparently. But the two cameras weren't working in the corridor. Neither of the cameras were working. And yet in the sound, you could see, like, um some sort of blanket and some sort of toy material on the floor. And I think I'm thinking, well, if he's on suicide watch, should he have all that in there? He shouldn't have had that if he's on suicide watch. So that's why I've just downloaded the 2,000 page document, which I will go through slowly but surely. But that's something I can do. I'm not going into that case yet. I'm, you know what I mean? That's something I can do while my daughter's here. She's watching TV. I can just sit in there on my laptop. Or when she goes to bed, she normally goes to bed about 10 or 11. I can sit there and just go through it. But it's a 2,000 page document. What? So. That's why I went back over this case, because they are now, there's a possibility that this case, the 1999 shooting, and a couple of other shootings could be re-looked into. Especially that one that Joe's talked about. And we haven't gone through his indictment, his, his filing. We can do that. What? Hang on. What was I going to do tomorrow night now? <laughs> what was I going to do tomorrow night now? Can't remember. 
If I can't remember what I was going to do, I probably I might go through that document that Rodney Jones, little Rod, his his um document. I did say I put my Discord link on in the description. Um, actually, I'll see if I can get my Discord up. Let's see if I can get my link. Right, okay, I'll get the link. I don't know if you get my link. Right, <laughs> I don't know how I can get my link on Discord. Oh, I might have it. I don't know. Is that it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it. I well, right, when I find out how to get my link for my Discord account up, I will post it in on my community channel and I'll post it on X. And I will also post it on face on my Facebook page. Please come and join me on my Facebook page. I'll post the link up in the description. So that will be there. But I don't know how to get the link for my Discord. I'm new to Discord, I don't know much about it. It's just that on Discord, I'm posting all these documents that I've got without being redacted. Right? Because I won't post them on Facebook because I'd have to redact a lot of words out. And I don't want to do that. So, I can post them on X, but I also can post, I want to just stick it, stay to one place for these documents. Right, uh, which I want to put on Discord. So, if you want to see these documents unedited, unredacted by me, it might be redacted by whoever else, but not by me, then come and join me on my Discord. Right, uh, I'll try and get a final link out to give to you. But, How on earth he got away with that when you got that one guy saying it was definitely him? Right? Where was he now? Let's look. Right. Where was he? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That while you had the magazine, and I'm looking for him. Oh, God. Beck, that's it. Right? That guy there, Beck. Right? He says it was so. Huh? But the woman who got shot in the face is adamant. She's never deterred, gone off, her, off track. She's always said it was Diddy. She's seen the guns get pulled. She's seen who was holding the guns. Now, I know we're going back to 1999, but... But look at that, right? This was apparently taken 20 minutes after bullets flew. 
and J-Lo and Diggy flew in and navigated before being arrested. Right? So, if they wasn't guilty, okay, I can understand them wanting to leave the nightclub because they don't want to be involved with that. You know what I mean? Oh, God, there's been a shooting. Let's, get, let's just get in our car and drive away. Right? I can understand that. But why go through red lights, go speeding past police cars, if you're innocent? You could have got in the car and just drove away, normally. Yep. But no, they got in the car and drove rapidly around over red lights, through red lights, which could have caused major, major accidents, past patrol cars, all because they're innocent, and they're just leaving a nightclub where there was a shooting, and they're innocent. Yeah, right, okay. Innocent people don't act like that. They don't. Yeah, you might want to get away from the scene, but you don't need to go through leg, uh, speed through red lighting, speed past uh, traffic cars, uh, police cars. You don't need to do that. You can just drive away normally and go in the back of the car. Thank God, go away from there, you know what I mean? So don't try and tell me he's innocent. Right, and I'm no shine deep. Hold on, I'm gonna find out. Uh, there was a video. Right, hold on. There was a video I've seen. Here it is. I think this is it. Yeah. I think this is the uh, one.
This was six months ago, by the way. This was done six months ago. That's interesting to know because I wasn't sure about that, right? Because I knew she claimed a young disclosure thing, right? But I also heard that this young disclosure that she signed was very broad, right? It didn't specifically state what she could say or what she couldn't say about what or when or where, you know what I mean? So. I'd like to see that NDI.
as I said, she's lucky to be alive. But it's true, if someone shoots you in the face, you're going to be looking at the person with the gun, aren't you? And like I said, Shine went, was caught by police that was already outside the club by going out the side exit. It's caught by two police officers, right? However, Didi and J-Lo and his, his, his bodyguard left the club, got in the car, sped off, went across three red lights, went speeding past uh, two police cars. Why would you do that if you're innocent? You wouldn't, would you? You're doing that to get away from there so that, look, let's get back to my place. We can just make out that we haven't been out or whatever. We've been here. They was trying to hide, get away and hide the fact that they was ever at that club. As I said, money talks. And he will get paid off everyone in that nightclub if need be to say he wasn't there. So, That's true. By deporting him, he couldn't come back and step on the US soil. Which means he couldn't speak to federal agents, anyone, about what actually happened that night. Right. But I think he has spoke out about it. But we'll just watch this a bit longer.
Right. So that was six months ago. They're talking about the possibility of that 1999 case being reopened. And I think they need to. There's, two, there's red flags galore, right? Just so happens to be two police officers outside the nightclub when they heard the shoot, the guns going off, right? They call up Mr. Shine running out the side entrance of the nightclub. But while they're calling Mr. Shine leaving the side entrance, P. Diddy, J. Lo, and his bodyguard walk out of the nightclub and get into the car and drive away. Now, that's a bit sus in my eyes as well. And then, I don't just drive away like there's been a shooting in that kind of club. I don't want to be there. I just want to go home. Just drive us home. You know what I mean? No. Get out of here now. Get out of away from this nightclub now. Boom. Foot down on the pedal. Down they go. Over three red lights, past three, uh, two police cars, speeding, dodging in and out of cars, and whatever. Oh, yeah, you're innocent, okay? If you're innocent, you don't act like that. So I hope they do look into that case again, because that woman, Nathaniel Rubin, she saw who shot her. I don't care what anyone says, she saw who shot her. Right? And no one's paying her off. Uh, what else was there? Uh, hang on. There's some else. Uh, is this one? Did he fire gun not shine? Claims 1999 shoot. He paid off the club. Let's have a look at this one. Uh, right, let's just present this. I don't think it's a video, I think it's just an article. And it's raining here. Oh, how lovely. Right. This was February 29th, 2024. Diddy has been accused of paying off the nightclub that was the scene of a shooting back in 1999, which left former bad boy artist Shine incarcerated for decades. Well, not for decades, for nine years. Natalia Rubin, the woman who was shot in, New in Club New York on December 27th, 1999, took to her social media pages on Wednesday, February 28, to point the finger squarely at the embattled mogul. Let me tell you why that is of utmost importance to me, she began, referring to Gigi's myriad legal issues, because I am the woman he shot in the face in that December the 7th, 27th, 1999 club, New York shooting. I have told everyone I did not seen since then, even the surgeon who did the surgery to take the bully, I got sh oh, well done, I'm well done. Right. Um, even the surgeon who did the surgery to take the bully, I got shot in the face with a 9mm hollow point bully called a cop killer. Right? I literally told everyone and never changed what I said. I watched him. I got shot in the face. I watched him fire the gun. I've said it all this time. Even the surgeon who did my surgery 
testified in the criminal trial that while we, they were putting me under anesthesia. She continued, I was screaming, Puff, Puffy shot me in the face. Everyone knew he did it, but he paid off, paid off the club bouncer and all these other people to hide the video. That's his M.O. Ruben, who received nearly two million in a settlement at the time from Diddy, also accused the mogul of attempting to flatten her car as a means of intimidation, echoing a claim first made by Kid Cudi. However, Diddy has always maintained his innocence and was acquitted of all charges in the 99 shooting. Shai, meanwhile, was convicted of the shooting, sentenced to 10 years in prison and deported to police upon his release. Ruby, why did he take the two million in a settlement? Because of that, he walked out of court. You, you, he paid you. That's all a jury would see. If that went to a jury trial, her evidence would have been thrown out. And how much did Mr. Coombs pay you? Two million? Boom. That's her evidence wiped out. Because he paid her. And that's why he walked out of the court. Right? So, what else is it? Let's see. What ha what was happening for me in my life, in my time, was a miracle. Because that incident in New York, in Club New York, ended my career, he said. All I used to pray for, I know I defended myself, I defended my friends. Who are you talking about there? Oh. Um, so, oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, let's just go back up a bit. However, Diddy always maintained his innocence and was acquitted of all charges in the 1999 shooting. Sean, meanwhile, was convicted of the shooting, sentenced to 10 years in prison and deported to release. He wasn't actually convicted of the shooting, he was convicted of guns and some else. Back in 2020, Sean sat down for a conversation with Fat Joe. Fat Joe, Fat Joe, oh God, who's Fat Joe now? Fat Joe. Oh no, that's a big shame, sorry. Fat Joe and told a different story than the one Ruben is telling. Right? Oh, let's just go back again. What was happening for me in my life in my time was a miracle course. Miracle, because that incident in the Club New York almost ended my career, he said. All I used to pray for, I know, pray for. I know I defended myself, I defended my friends. I was in fear for my life. Scar, who was the instigator, I know Scar from Brooklyn. Those are my guys. I didn't have a problem with him. That wasn't my beef. That was... Babe, that was Puff's issue. They had a problem with Puff for whatever reason. Scar, Nino, and the entire, an entire Brooklyn crowd was in the club at New York. He continued, I seen them, he was all of, but then they started arguing with Puff. I know what these Brooklyn guys are capable of. I know what Scar was capable of. I know what Nino is capable of. I know what happens once he's done. Argument star. Once the start, it becomes a problem, a serious problem. Once he starts talking crazy, yeah, I become afraid for my life. Once he says it's about to happen, then it's about to happen. He concluded, I seen something you can reach for a gun, and I reach for my weapon, and I defended my friends and myself. Because once he starts firing, once whoever else pulls out a gun starts firing, it doesn't stop there. Hip Hop, DX, has reached out to Diddy's representatives for coming. Hmm.
Right. He didn't do the shooting. I'm sorry, he did not do the shooting. Because why would you... Li it's just... Co too, it's like, okay, Sean did the shooting and shot out the side entering. Well, there just happened to be two police officers who heard the shooting inside the nightclub walking along. And caught him. Right? And while he's being arrested and whatever, Diddy, J-Lo and his bodyguard walk out of the club, jump in the car, drive off at high speed. You don't drive off at high speed if you're in a scene. Yeah, you want to get away from the scene because you've gone, oh my God, I've just seen a shooting. Come on, let's get out of here. But you stay within the law because you're just going to bring... Attention to yourself if you go speeding through traffic lights, three sets of them, and speeding past two cop cars, you're going to bring attention to yourself. Drive normally. Yes, you might be, oh my God, I've got to get away from here. What just happened then, you know what I mean? Can't believe that there was a shooting. Oh my Lord. You know what I mean? But you, you st try and stay within the law. Or even stay as a witness. It's like, I saw it, officer. You know what I mean? You don't run off at high speed, drive off at high speed. Cutting across two, three red lights and speeding past two police cars. You don't do that if you're innocent. But as, if it's true what that memoir says, as I said when I showed it the other night, if you believe it, you believe. If you don't, you don't. I think there's bits in there that are true. Right? But I think some is just being, uh, what's the word they use? Uh, when they want to hype it up a bit more. Right? So... I think the beatings that she got was true. I really do. Well, one of his bodyguards who was there for, with him from 2003 to 2012, he said he had to come between them several times because of the fights that was going on between them. And all that, you know what I mean? Um, I think near the end she she was fighting back because she's had enough. She's had enough. Especially after that last apparent beating that she had. After Not long after the, well, a couple of months or so, six months or so after the birth of Christian. So yeah, I can believe those beatings. But I think a lot of it was sensation, last it's sensationalised. I knew I'd get the word eventually. But I do think he was in, he, he was the one who had the gun. And she had a little purse or a little bag or whatever with her. No woman goes to a nightclub or goes out in the evening without a little purse, a little cross purse or a little bag. No woman. Grab somewhere for your lipstick to go and your face powder or whatever you want to use. Eyeliner. Touch up makeup. That's what I call it. I call it my touch up makeup. Put my makeup on, but then I put like certain items I'll take with me if I'm going out. It'd be my eyeliner, my mascara, and my lip gloss. Right? Because I always touch up my eyeliner and my mascara and definitely in my lips. My face is fine, it's got enough foundation and blusher on and highlighter on. Oh, I'll take my highlighter stick for my, maybe my eye, on my eyes. 
No, a lot of highlight from my eyes just to check that up. Or something like that. But I've got about three or four small little items which you can carry in your clutch bag. And you can carry a gun in your clutch bag, believe me. They're big enough to carry a gun. So, no woman goes without a bag. I don't care how skimpy the clothes she's got on. She'll have a bag with her. And if she hasn't, she's got someone following her with a bag, which has got a touch of makeup in. Anyway. So, do you think they should, the FBI are? My list was six months ago when we watched, when we watched that video. Do you think the FBI are looking into that case again? And into the, the other shootings? Like the one that was mentioned in the little Rod's complaint. Right? Actually, yeah, we'll go over his one tomorrow, little Rod's one tomorrow. We'll go over his and um, whatever he put out. But I want to find, if I can't, the probable cause affidavit for PTG for that. 1999 suit, uh, you know, for the, his arrest this year, for his arrest this year, I cannot find it. <coughs> so, anyway, I'm going to leave it there because it's gone two hours. I've got to get my cat off my lap. It's, it's killing my legs, going dead. So, let me know in the comments what you think. Do you think they will open that case up again? Or any of these cases? Any of these shooting cases? Do you think... I, I don't want to say do you think Little Rod's telling the truth because we haven't really looked at his case yet. We've only looked at highlights of what other people have said about the case. We'll do that tomorrow night. But do you think... The feds should look into the 1999 case and any of the other shootings. Right? Where his name has come into it. I do. Because there's no way did that shooting at that uh recording studio happen outside didn't happen outside there'd be more blood there'd be all the blood and tissues and everything outside wouldn't there not in the bathroom oh hold on he's just been shot we'll just take him to the bathroom get all the tissues to try and dab him you know what i mean oh well the ambulance is coming we've got to get him back outside no no that shooting happened in that bathroom but we'll discuss that tomorrow in more detail when we go through the uh, documents. So I'd just like to say thank you for being here. Thank you for bearing with me and going back on a, um, what was he? What can I call this? Uh, not a mystery tour. Going back in time. We're going back. We went back in time tonight. Back to 1999. Oh, God, how old was I then? Oh, hold on. I was 33. Oh, my God, I'm old. I'm old. Anyway, so thank you all for being here. Please give this video a like, share it. Leave me a comment. I say it every time. And I'll see you next time. I don't have a slow walk, no, I don't think I got no love for the fake news. If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up and make a statement. I don't have a slow walk, no, I don't think I got no love for the fake news. If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up and make a statement. I don't have a slow walk. I don't take shit, I got no love for the
Thank you again for being here, everyone. Guys, safe. Hey